Hi kids, it's Miss Jordan, and in today's part of the Big God Story, we're going to hear about a name, a man named Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a Pharisee. So Pharisees were important Jewish leaders. They were very religious and taught perfect obedience to the Old Testament law, which would cause God to send his Messiah. Who was the Messiah? Do you guys know? Jesus. That's right. Jesus was the Messiah. The Pharisees expected the Messiah to be the king who would rule Israel and overthrow Israel's enemies. But this wasn't what God wanted for Jesus quite yet. Before we hear more, can we pray together? All right, put your hands together. Let's pray. Dear God, I just want to ask that you give us guidance during this lesson today, God, and that you touch each one of these children today and let them know that they are blessed and that they are loved by you, Lord, and let them open their ears and their hearts to receive your word. Amen. All right, so the story. One night, Nicodemus secretly went to speak to Jesus. Nicodemus had a lot of questions for Jesus. All right, can you guys open up your Bibles to John 3, and we're going to read verses 2 through 4. Okay, so I'm going to get my Bible too. So John 3, 2 through 4. After dark one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said, we all know that God has sent us, sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean? exclaimed Nicodemus. How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus talks about being born again. Can we go, I don't think we can go back in our mommy's bellies and be born again. When Jesus talks about being born again, what do you think he means? Think about that. What do you think he means to be born again? So the Bible says when we were dead in our sins, God made us alive with Christ. That's Colossians 2.13. He says... You were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ for he forgave all of our sins. So to be born again is when Christ gives us a new spiritual life and we learn to trust and obey in Jesus. That's when we decide that God is the most important. So being born again isn't something you can always see. So what's something you can't see? Can you see the wind? I don't think you can see the wind. You can see, what do you see when the wind, when it's windy, what happens? You have the leaves blowing and the dust in the air and the branches on the trees blowing. But you can't see the wind. You just see what the wind does. And the wind blows the leaves, right? But you can't see the wind. So you can hear its sound. You can hear when the wind is loud. But you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. So it's with everyone. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot see where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Can you see the wind? No. But you can see it. You can see the effects the wind has. In the same way, Jesus said that we can't see God's spirit. We can't see God, but we can see how God affects our lives, and we can see his love. You can't see him. He's not just a person walking down the street, but you can see how he, how he loves you. So Jesus went on to tell Nicodemus that he would, he would do the offer salvation to the world. He reminded Nicodemus of something that happened to people of Israel in the Old Testament. The people of Israel disobeyed God. Disobeyed is when they're being bad. Disobeyed God. So God allowed poisonous snakes to bite the people, and many of them died. But when the people repented of their sin and prayed, God told Moses to make a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked at the bronze snake, they lived. So this is in Numbers 21, 8 through 9. So can you open your Bibles to 21, 8 through 9? Then the Lord told him, make a replica of a poisonous snake and attach it to a pole. All who are bitten will live if they simply look at it. So Moses made a snake out of bronze and attached it to a pole. Then anyone who was bitten by a snake could look at the bronze snake and be healed. The Israelites traveled next to Abith and camped there. Um, that's it. So... From this, Jesus explained that he was like that bronze snake. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so that the son of the man can be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life. So if you believe in Jesus, you can have eternal life. 
Jesus knew he would be lifted up on the cross and die for the sins of the world so people can forever live with him and be in a relationship with him. Jesus knew his life was a sacrifice, so he generously gave it away. The Pharisees didn't think that the Messiah should do that. They expected him to be a ruling, reigning king, like the king of a country. But that's not what Jesus wanted, or what God wanted for Jesus. But Jesus knew his job was to be servant to all. So Jesus laid it out for Nicodemus, which with that, what he said next, Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Have you heard this verse before? If so, raise your hands. I have. This is what the big God story is all about. God is love, and he sent his son to save us from our sins. The Bible never specifically tells us that Nicodemus decided to follow Jesus, but we can see that Nicodemus' encounter with Jesus changed his life. Later in the book of John, Nicodemus spoke up for Jesus before all the other Pharisees. Then after Jesus died, Nicodemus helped take Jesus' body and prepare it to be buried. Nicodemus risked his reputation and humbled himself to serve to the Messiah he had come to love. He did this because he knew that God is love. So my story when I came to know Jesus is I was very sad. Um, I was having a hard time at home and I was always sad and I didn't have many friends at school. And it made me very sad. And I had this one friend who would always tell me, you should pray about it. And I was like, I don't know what that is. And because my mommy and daddy weren't always, we didn't always pray at home. So I didn't know what it was. And so when I learned about Jesus, I decided that I wanted a relationship with Jesus. So I started going to church. And when I started going to church at first, I didn't understand. And, but through time, I learned to follow Jesus and to trust in Jesus and to love him. And I learned that whatever my sins were or anything bad, that Jesus could save me and that Jesus could help me. And so we can't be born again on our own. I was born again, not like in my mom's tummy again, but Jesus made me born again. We must believe that Jesus died for our sins and on the cross to save us. When we're born again, God gives us his spirit. The Bible describes the Holy Spirit as being clothed with power from our from on high, the Holy Spirit gives us new life so we can become God's children. This is such good news and is what the big story, big God story is all about because God loved the world. He sent his son, Jesus, to save us. So just remember that Jesus loves you all and that no matter what you do or what's going on, Jesus is always there and he always forgives you and he loves you. And that God gave Jesus his one and only son, so that we can be forgiven for our say, forgived for our sins, and that we can be with God forever when we go to heaven. And but that means we have to be obedient to God and pray to Him and love Him and know that He loves us. I hope you guys enjoyed the story today, and I can't wait to see you guys soon. Love you.